Our next presenter is Chris Morentis. He's the founder and CEO of Surefire Social. It's leading internet marketing services company for contractors in North America. Uh, he's driven innovation and growth at a number of large media and e-commerce companies, including AOL and Clearspring. Chris is off, also a frequent speaker at major digital marketing conferences and a sought-after contributor to various technology-focused publications. And all of you have a hand in making them the largest social media company for contractors. So um, everybody, Chris Morentes. It's not about technology. Technology now is really inexpensive. It's leveled the playing field for small business owners, for you guys now to compete with anybody at any level. It's really about knowledge and how do you think about putting it all together into a plan that's workable for your business. So I'm going to take a step back here and, and um, kind of, the, I was asked to, so by, you know, by the group to, to sort of bring it all together. How do you put it into an overall plan? And also give you a glimpse of where I think, I think we're at the juncture of another major, major change in marketing. And I want to give you a glimpse of what that is and what that means for your companies, okay? So what we're going to cover, and this is going to be focused on lead, lead generation. You know, we do talk a little bit about nurturing, but you guys, have, we've talked about nurturing with, with the Infusionsoft folks and with video. So obviously, you bring people to your website, you paid for that that person, that lead, you want to make sure that you're going to monetize them and keep in touch with them. So we've already covered that. I want to talk about more like how do you cast that wide net and bring people into your lead funnel and into your into your uh, list, into your uh, your company list. So number one, I want to cover is who's searching for my services and how do I find them and them find me? What are the different ways? How's that changed? And what do I need to do to to be more visible? And understanding what SEO really means. One of the biggest things that I want to talk to you about today is SEO is changing right now in a huge way. And you can't any longer separate social media and SEO. They're all one of the same. And to do all that, you've got to be able to create really interesting content. That video session was awesome about how to create video content. But you've got to create layers of content to feed that machine. The question becomes, how do you do that? As small business owners, and how do you build that into your workflow and process, or I guess want to help you do that. And then we'll talk a little bit about what the social graph is. Um, anybody hear that term social graph before? It's a really important term to understand because it's how people are interconnected. And there's a big thing about the social graph that's important to understand. It's about trust. Search engines trust people connections now more than they trust content connections. And that's why social media and getting more interaction, engagement, commenting, liking in social media is becoming more and more important for your visibility. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then how to make your website a generator. I, I speak a lot. I've been, I feel like I've been on the road every week since IRE in January, um, talking to different groups. And I get, so I, there's a lot of common questions. One of them is, you know, whenever we talk to people, it's generally they're, they're overwhelmed, confused, frustrated, and in a lot of cases really pissed off. And you're pissed off because, you know, there's a lot of new shiny objects and there's a lot of tools. And like I said, tools are important and they're really good, but the key is, is to know how to use them because that's the difference. It's the intelligence and knowledge of how to use them. So we're going to focus a little bit on, on that. And then what are the steps that are necessary? How do I increase my odds of showing up on the first page of Google? Google is still 80% of search, but search has changed in terms of search engine results pages. Because if you look at search engine results pages, videos show up. It's not just your website pages anymore. There's a lot of other content that you could create that shows up on search engine results pages that give people an impression of your company. So it's important to think about all those different layers of content. And then this is another really big one. Like, you know, because all of us sit there, I'm, you know, I'm in my early 50s too, and I'm not a youngster anymore. And a lot of us sit here and think, you know what, Facebook, come on, really? You know, people are looking for my business on Facebook. People are really looking for me in different places. We're going to talk a little bit why why social media is important to your business. It's not just about communication, it's about 
SCO2, and we'll, we'll define that. So I presented, well, we talked three years ago, kind of this part of this chart. I used, to, uh, I used to run a company called Add This. Ever see websites where it says Add This? You could set, you could, you could send the, the content or bookmark the content or put it on the Facebook. That's a company I helped start. It was a venture-backed company. And I saw the web was atomizing, you know, into thousands of places. It used to be a come-to-me medium, and now it's become to a, a place where you want to go to where people hang out, right? In the Web 1.0 world, we train people to go to the internet to search for a product or service and discover that product and service. In the Web 2.0 world, now people talk to each other about those products and services. Now we're moving into a new world where they're not only talking to each other about it, but the signals that are sent in that discovery is really, really important to your guy's business. Um, and here's a, 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 a quote by a Google spokesperson. I'll show you another one where social signals that Google and other search engines are picking up are becoming more and more important parts of the search algorithm. So when someone retweets your tweet, right, that's a, that's a, that's a search signal that tells, that tells the, the search engines that there's something about this person or this company. We'll talk more about people becoming links in a, in a little bit. But the idea is the same that we talked about three years ago where you want to leverage this atomized web where there's all these high authority websites, your social media sites, Web 2.0 sites, and you want to drive a linking strategy into your website. But as I think Ramon talked about earlier in the, the landing, the uh, conversion guy who's beamed in by satellite talked about, you want to have different landing pages on your website based on what your exact messaging is. And on S, he talked mostly about pay-per-click when you're doing paid ads or you're doing you know, promotions or, or a, 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 leaf, a direct marketing campaign. You send it to a, a landing page that you've paid marketing. But in SEO as well, you want to create different landing pages for different services you have. And you want to have a linking strategy that you're sending from content that's associated with that content on that landing page to that landing page. So you want to do the same, you want to do that same thing. The key about this new world though is that you need to create content that's going to make it interesting for people to want to link and, and, and uh, comment and share what your content is. Now we're at another major turning point in marketing and I think this is really really huge. Are you guys familiar with the purchase funnel? Everybody kind of hear about the purchase funnel that's been around and going from awareness to action. That purchase funnel I discovered was created in 1896. I thought that was pretty amazing. A guy in 1896 had the foresight to realize that consumers have to go through these four basic states before they actually make a brand buying decision. I don't know what they were selling at the time. It must have been like horse and buggy whips or saddles or something, right? And it's been around and, and really kind of, you know, been improved upon or rethought or whatever since then. But now with, with social media, what the real opportunity to do is we, I think different folks, Ramon touched on it and the video guy touched on it, you know, is that to take, take that lead that you got, and even more importantly, that sale that you made of a satisfied customer, and now explode that funnel at the bottom of that funnel, and now take that, take that valuable asset you have now and do that video that we just talked about. Get the testimonial. Get the review on Yelp. Uh, get the review on Google+. Plus. Um, so you want to get engagement, sharing, connectivity, endorsement at the bottom of that funnel and blow that funnel out. And that's how you could use social media to create both signals, social proof, and visibility. Okay? So this emerging social web changes everything. And let me tell you the reason why those reviews... And the you know and, and you know getting people looking at your things on YouTube and things like that are important. 
And probably looking at it as, as reviews, taking that as an example is the best way to explain it. Three years ago, if you wanted to do a review on Google Plus or Yelp, it kind of frustrated all you guys, right? Because your competitors were probably put going on there, creating a false you know, identity or no identity of first name, and just writing good reviews about themselves. Maybe if they were really nasty, they were doing bad reviews about you. Today, if you want to do a review on Google Plus or Yelp, you've got to have a full profile, picture, you know, description of yourself. And not only that, but what they're doing is they're tracking your personal reputation. Who else is attached to you on Yelp or Google Plus? What are their reputations? What's going on now is you're becoming a hub and they're tracking your reputation. I heard a stat that 40% of reviews that were um, created and submitted to Yelp never got published because they have review filters now that are really filtering out all that stuff. Because of that, now Google has a much higher trust of reviews that are done on those platforms versus others. There's a client of ours that's a very big window client in the Denver area. We just brought on that sent us an email two weeks ago. They've gotten bad reviews on Yelp, and it's really affecting their conversion of their website now because people are going to Yelp to find out, okay, I like this guy. He's a potential, you know, someone I want to hire. They go to Yelp when they see all these bad reviews. He wanted to do a living social coupon and drop that. Living social wouldn't take his deal because they had a bad Yelp comment on it. So, so I'm just trying to illustrate why these things are important for you to be, to be, to be concerned about and get regular Com, you know, regular reviews, things like that, but also why search engines are focused on social as people links are going to start to become as important or more important than content links. As an SEO guy, the last you know, 10 years, SEO has been about managing content links and, and earned links and creating that diagram I showed you before. Increasingly, we're, you know, content links are still going to be important, but increasingly, it's going to be how do we create vi uh, create content for you, and distribute that content in all the social places and get distribution, and how do we create systems and processes within your workflow to get the pictures, to get the videos, to get the reviews from your customers, so you can create that blueprint. Makes sense. Everybody with me so far? So to give you an idea of how the search engines are changing their behavior, this is a um, a uh, 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 chart that was done by Search Metrics, and they they did some search engine algorithm checks of like you know uh, like sort of ninety eight percent of the searches in Google for certain keywords and terms. And I wish I could get this. I don't think this thing works, Scott, for the pointer thing. But you can see up here. I don't know if you guys could read it, but Facebook shares, for example, have become a really big um, a really big ranking factor. Number of backlinks are still really important, but the Facebook total, Facebook comments, Facebook likes, tweets. So more and more search engines are baking into their search algorithm search, uh, social media signals that you're making. So it's becoming really, really important and validated. So the social graph. The social graph is basically the graph of the way people communicate with each other, sharing pictures commenting, liking. You have your own personal social graph of all the people you're connected to, what you share with them, and it's all being tracked. It's all, it's all being tracked. It's being tracked anonymously. There's nothing mysterious about it. But you're developing a personal reputation on that. I believe in the next two or three years, remember like everybody, like every restaurant in Manhattan wanted a New York Times restaurant critic to come to their restaurant because they knew if they wrote it, wrote about it, everyone would want to go there. What's going to happen now is people with really high reputations on Google Plus and Yelp, you're going to see every restaurant giving them free meals so they can write a review on them because they have really high personal reputations. You guys ought to, and people on your staff, ought to create Yelp accounts and Google Plus accounts of your own and start just giving reviews so you could start to build your own personal reputations so you could start to do things with that. 
um, later as this starts to really evolve. Okay? So these signals are becoming really, really important as people share your content, comment, bookmark it, all that other stuff. So content creation is becoming really important. So how do you kind of pull this all together? How do you create a plan for your business to create a wide net and to bring in you know, email addresses, people downloading content, all the stuff that Ramon and others were, were talking about, view your videos. So you want to have a properly structured website. One of the things that um, you know, I didn't hear earlier that I think is really, really important is to make sure that you have a mobile responsive website. You know, we haven't talked a lot about mobile here, but for our clients, mobile now is starting to become, you know, 15%, 20% of the volume of the search volume. You can, you can go into Google Analytics, I don't know if any of you have done that, and actually look and they'll tell you what percent of your traffic is mobile enabled, right? So you want to make sure you build a mobile responsive website. You want to make sure that you've got it structured so that if you do, you know, roofing, windows, and siding, you've got landing pages for all those things as well as your, your home page. And you want to make sure you have the conversion mechanisms on that that we learned about in that conversion. It's not just for paid marketing, but you want to be able to, and you want to track it. You want to have trackable phone numbers, record the phone calls. You want to have, you know, request a quote forms that go, that get dropped into an autoresponder so people kind of know that you've got it and that you've got ways to, to follow up on that. Um, and you also want to, we like to have three different types of uh, content on a landing page. Phone number, request a quote, I need help right now, and some kind of educational tool. Could be a video, could be a downloadable handbook, infographics or something we're doing now, starting to do for our clients as well. Um, Seth Gooden, anybody know Seth Gooden or follow Seth Gooden here? He's an awesome marketer. I almost went to work for him, but I went to AOL instead. Um, great guy, but he had a really interesting comment. When everyone has access to the same tools, then having the tool isn't as much of an advantage. So the idea is properly structured website, search engine optimization that you do the right on-page and off-page optimizations we talked about, and social media, but this all has to be integrated as a platform. And then during peak seasons, you would add some pay-per-click to that because you want to be able to dominate those search engine results pages that you know convert. So doing those things will help you get more than your fair share of leads in a given market, okay? But putting that together in a workflow that makes sense for your company and build, you know, having everybody on the same page within your company, what your right keywords are, what's your right keyword strategy. Because you want to make sure you're building videos and titling videos that are consistent with the keyword strategy of the pages you want to rank on your website and the visibility that you want to have in social media. Okay? So, um, website. It's the Weta Roofing. They've been a client of ours and CCN member here for quite some time, otherwise known as Batman. Speaking of like viral videos, that went crazy. But, um, so, you know, it's simple, easy to use layout, call to action, uh, request a quote, different resources people could download. We capture their name on it. A video here and the ability to share. You could see. Um, that share button, oh, there it is, share button right there. That's my old company. And then on-page optimization. Um, on-page optimization means uh, meta tags and, uh, you know, descriptions that all are consistent with your keyword strategy. But it also means some technology built into your website and your content management system. Everything should be dynamic. So we showed you in the last in that last um, Istoeta Roofing homepage that uh, every piece of content there is shareable, postable, sendable. You know, if you if you're in cabinet, if you're in kitchen cabinets, a wife is doing searching and sees a manufacturer that you represent that they really like, you want them to be able to send that to their husband, saying, "Hey, you know what? This is something we're going to look at," or post it to their friends on Facebook. So you want. You want things to be able to be shareable, postable, sendable, every piece of content. The other thing is, is you want some automated pinging. So when you add a new piece of content, a new blog post, or a new picture, or a new video, you want that automatically pinged 
to the different parts of your social network, your Web 2.0 sites, and to search engines and let them know, hey, there's a new piece of content, I'm here. Okay. You can see here um, for Aries Roofing in Tampa, the um, local directories, you want to make sure you have Google Maps built in as well. So off-page optimization, this is where things are really changing a lot. Um, off-page optimization used to be about establishing, you know, a presence in article directories, you know, um, other kinds of major directories, um, some Web 2.0 sites, and publishing content and putting up there and have links coming back to your site. Those are called managed links. And managed links are still important, but high-quality managed links are what you ought to be focusing on. And the way we like to do them now, where we're going forward on this, is if you have two or three competitors in your market, the great thing about um, digital marketing is you can reverse engineer what your competitors are doing. And I have a book called Digital Forensics that you can get on our website, by the way, um, surefiresocial.com. You can download it. That teaches you how to do that yourself, where you can find out what are the top links your competitors have. And then what you want to do is match those links. Usually there are places where you can get links too. There might be a .edu, it might be a local um, uh, newspaper or something like that. You want to make sure that the high value links that your competitors have, you're matching, and then you can do other things to get ahead of them. Okay, So that's, that's part of it. The other part of it though is that you want to create your own blog posts. And then you want to use it, when you create your own blog posts, you're going to be able to now promote those in your social networks and tell your people about it. The other thing we like to do with clients, and we're doing with some of the clients in this room, is we do something called promoted posts on Facebook. Facebook's a great place to do promoted posts because you get a lot of engagement, which are social signals, and a lot of viral activity. When you do a promoted post, it's something that's really, really interesting. And we recommend doing like one or two promoted posts a month that are tied to some content that you create on Facebook. On Twitter, a really great strategy is a lot of you associated with big manufacturers. I know we work a lot with, um, with GAF, for example. We, work, we coordinate um, social media with them in a pretty big way. And what, uh, what they're doing now, we've kind of showed them how to do, is create a hashtag strategy to create trending um, keywords in the roofing space. And they dominate that. So then you as a dealer now could come on the coattails of that trending hashtag keyword, hashtag that yourself with your own content, so you'll more likely to come up and search and break out of the clutter in Twitter. Are you going to get a lot of new clients off of Twitter? No. And I would say Twitter would probably not be a first priority. It would probably be a fourth priority in terms of social media for contractors. But if you feel like you're doing Facebook well, you feel like you're doing Google Plus well, you feel like you're doing LinkedIn well, that's a great place. To, that's a great strategy for Twitter for you. And then press releases. If you've got new employees coming, you've got um, a new line that your manufacturer uh, introduced and now you're going to carry it, have a heads up on doing press releases and do them in high value places like PR web. And that has all tracking, stuff like that. Um, do infographics. You know, infographics are great consumer tools. It's a real visual representation of a communication strategy that you want to do. Um, we also do off-page blogs. We set up five off-page, off-website blogs for our clients and promote those in different places. So off-page is about content creation and distribution and promotion, all with links coming back to your website. But the idea is to earn those links. Have people share them and move them and do things with them. And you know, just like we were talking about tracking and, and stuff like that, social, um, there's ways to track your social on, um, you know, Facebook has tracking and insights, LinkedIn has tracking insights, Twitter has tracking insights. But you know, uh, Google Analytics has great tracking insights. If you put a little piece of code on your website, you can actually track social interactions. They'll actually tell you um, the number of people that um, became a lead directly because of social media, that was an assist because of social media, or that was here within 30 days and 
and, and then became converted because of social media. You'd be amazed. This is one of our clients, I think someone in this room, and um, you could see, like, these, this is the top referral sites for this client. Look at YouTube, Facebook, read it, because we're using read it as a, as a blogging tool for them. Twitter, Blogger, and Google+. Okay. So Facebook, why Facebook? Facebook is the primary thing. If you had to focus on one thing in social, I'd say it's Facebook. Number one, there's a billion people on Facebook, and they're all consumers, and they're all your potential customers. Um, and we also know that Facebook um, has, is, is more likely to be used for local search, according to a ComScore study. I'm going to move, start moving this pretty quickly because I know I don't have a lot of time and I have a lot of materials. Um, but Facebook, you could do really interesting posts of your blog posts, of your infographics, of your handbooks, things like that, and do a promoted post. And that will also get you more likes. What you want to do is you want to try to get to 1,000 likes. Because once you get to 1,000 likes, studies show that it really increases the number of people coming to your website from Facebook as well. Okay. The other thing you have to be ready about Facebook is Facebook is getting set up to compete with Google now in local search. Mark Zuckerberg, and they've got billions of dollars to do that from their IPO. So Facebook wants to take on Google plus local in local search, and they think they've got a better way to do it through the social graph because they've got a lot of information about people that Google Plus doesn't, and Google Plus Local doesn't. And they're going to be competing with each other, and I would bet that Facebook is going to be somewhat successful. How successful, we don't know, but Facebook something is a business you want to pay attention to and start getting active on, because if you want to play in local search and be visible in local search, Google, uh, Facebook is going to become an important platform for local search. They call it the graph search, is what, is what Google's doing. LinkedIn is um, a great place for, two, oh, for only two reasons. Number one is if you do commercial business, LinkedIn is a great place for commercial to find leads and get ahead of the curve. And I just presented something at, um, at GAF's um, Partners in Growth for all their commercial guys. Well, if you do, you have a special presentation. If you're a commercial guy, I'd be happy to walk you through that. For any contractor, though, so I'm a guy. I probably don't spend as much time on Facebook as my wife, daughter, other people do. But, you know, I'm used to going to Facebook for, um, you know, uh, to look at professionals. So I might go, if, I, if there's someone coming to my home, it's going to be in my home, working with my family and kids there, I want to make sure that they're reputable and have a good reputation. LinkedIn is a great place where people are going to go to start to look and say, who is this person? If you have a profile there and you look reputable and you're connected with a lot of people and other people aren't, that's a good thing. I just got the 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly. Um, you could create a personal page, but you could create a company page as well. What's really cool about Facebook, especially if you're a commercial guy, but even if you're this insights, when you create a, when you create a company page, what's awesome about that is when people start looking for other companies like yours on Facebook, it'll tell you what other companies they went to. So you'll start to see who you're competing with on Facebook, see what their page looks like and start to be able to know who your competition is and how to position yourself. So, so a lot of these tools on social are really great marketing information uh, for you as well. So complete a Facebook company page. Not, you know, whenever you, you kind of do these things, a lot of people rush through them and do it with the minimal. You, know, but you could put services. You could put your executives. Have all your major executives be connected to your company page. Excuse me, I'm on LinkedIn. One of the most important things I'm going to tell you, if there's one thing I want you to go away from here today to do, is I see you guys are getting like overwhelmed by this stuff. I'm not trying to, I can't, yeah. That's what I, that's the answer I really wanted. But the um, Google Google Plus, um, create a personal Google Plus page. And then tie your blog with something called Google authorship. You know, we do that for all of our clients for their blogs on their site and the blogs we create off their sites. But Google loves it. 
what they'll do is they search for it. And here's an example of a blog post I did where they put a picture, they give the blog caption. So statistically, when you have a picture next to your search engine results page, the click through goes through the roof. So when you blog and you're blogging every week and you're putting the right headlines and you're ranking for all those long tail keywords and then you've got to associate with your Google Plus profile, all of a sudden it's coming up with a picture and you're going to, especially if you have that and you have a video and you have your website ranking, you're going to own that search engine results page. But Google Plus authorship is so critical to being able to, um, to win. Image worth a thousand words. You know, uh, video's great, pictures are great. So you need to start to get in the habit and build workflow. We've all talked about it. You know, have your production guy take before and after pictures. You know, um, if someone's sitting there telling your guy how what a great job they did, you know, use your iPhone to take a video and say, hey, could you just repeat that? I like to feed them, like, you know, hey, you know, you said we were professional and we did the job on time and on budget and we were clean. Can you just tell me that? So a lot of you know, consumers need help in what they're going to repeat, especially if you're trying to do something you know, ad hoc like that. So it's always good to tell them what you want them to tell them, and then and they'll do it. You know. So, um, but you know, infographics are another great way to do it. Handbooks, but you need to be able to do these things regularly. So try to partner with a company that can help you create content to feed this new digital footprint that you just created. Okay. And then directory listings. Um, here's the thing I'm going to tell you about. There's a dynamic tension that I'm seeing between manufacturers and contractors, especially around listings. And there's great companies out there that do a really good job, like Guild Quality and Bizarre Voice and others, right, that work for manufacturers or dealers to get, to get um, reviews and things like that. But don't just focus on those things. And just like we were just talking about with video, there's video platforms, but you also have to focus on YouTube because every time someone hits your YouTube video, YouTube gives you a credit. It's a positive signal. It makes you look good. So you want to make sure that you're using all these different things. But especially with Yelp and Angelus and Google+, you've got to get have a regular way to get reviews in those places or you're going to be caught like that like that deal I just talked about. But make sure you have complete profiles and you have a system or process where you're asking for reviews in those different places for your, from your clients. And then pay-per-click. I'm not going to go through this a lot. You talked about landing pages and pay-per-click landing pages, but what to do is build a landing page that drives people to take an action. Don't do that. <laughs> you kind of went through enough about that earlier. And then we are very much believers in in nurturing well. We, we actually use Infusionsoft ourselves, but the idea of creating a, a nurturing campaign, you paid for the lead, you paid for a new customer, you could probably sell them or upsell them other things, but you know you don't want to just go back to them every time you want to sell them something. You want to be giving them information and advice along the way, so when you do have something to sell, they think you're a good guy, and you're not just, every time they hear from you, you're selling them something. So, this is a giant math equation, and I actually presented this in more detail three years ago. But the great thing about digital marketing is you could track and measure everything, and you should be. And if you're not, find someone who will help you do that. It all starts with what, what are the different searches you're trying to go after and, and dominate? What percent of those can you get to visit your website? What percent of those can you get to convert to some kind of a lead? And once you get that lead, what percent do you do setups? And your business should be 70 plus percent that, you know, the lead you get in that you're setting up in a home visit. And then what percent of those setups can you convert to a sale? And if you look at the lifetime customer value or even in your category, a lot of roofers, one-time customer value, you could see how much you could spend per lead and create a budget. One of the things I love that Ramon said was create a budget. You know, create a budget and don't be cheap because the return on investment will be there. Across our network, the average cost per lead is somewhere between $45 and $65 per lead, organic, not paid. Paid, it's about 80 to 90 bucks a lead, right? So, so what you want to do is don't be focused on the one-time cost. Be focused on creating a plan and what the cost per lead is going to be. Because when we did start this whole thing about three years ago was when the web atomized 
It created an economic level playing field. You guys don't have to rent eyeballs anymore. You could own eyeballs. You could own the platform. Anybody here read the book The E-Myth by Gerber, right? When that was done 20 some odd years ago, technology then was focused on productivity and accounting and things like that. Now technology exists, as Scott put this whole thing together, for marketing. So you could create marketing in a predictable way. So that becomes an asset to your business. When you, you, know, when you want to go one day, you know, God willing, to sell it, you could say, you know what, I've been you know, generating this many leads per month. Uh, I've got this page rank on my website. I've got this digital footprint. I create this content every month. And it happens when I'm there or not. Right? That's where you want to get to with your business. So properly budget. Um, you have to have an integrated implementation. This is the tough part for, for you guys. Three years ago when I first started here, a lot of you guys you had a, a web development guy and then you had a you know, SEO person that wanted to be the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain and not tell you any information. And, and then you had somebody doing your, your social media. You need to have an integrated approach. Um, what we do is we have a coach that works with clients that actually turnkeys helps them implement it and do it. And then we have a staff of people that do all the writing and implementation and stuff like that. And you got to create process and workflow and create content. So that's what we do is we create websites, we do SEO, we create content, we set up your social media and we run it, but you're a part where you're a partner with us in doing that. The best clients we have and a lot of them are in this room, you can talk to them, are ones that we actually meet with every week or minimally every other week. We're creating editorial plans for the coming month, um, and we're looking at metrics and data and ch making changes as time goes on. So, so actually, a lot of you guys are our clients in this room. We're in the process of changing over our whole SEO to be integrated SEO social media. Next two months, that's happening for you guys. And if your coaches haven't talked to you about it, they will be. Um, if you guys uh, aren't clients of ours, haven't talked to us, what I encourage you to do is something called a visibility analysis where you find out what your strengths and weaknesses are, how visible are you, and then figure out a custom program that will help you fill in those gaps and be more visible. Um, you might want to take a time to reevaluate your keywords and your strategies and what's working, what's not working, what your competitors are doing, where they're winning. You might have competitors that are just winning big somewhere that would cost you too much money to win, but there might be other things that you could win. We do a lot of that keyword research to figure out where you can win quickly and, and, and capture that. Get listed in the right directories and get a full profile in those directories. And start playing with social media. A comment before of just, like, just start doing this stuff and you'll learn is a good one. And then leverage your database, which is what the whole uh, Infusionsoft discussion was about. Friend us on Facebook, like us on Facebook. Um, we have a lot of great content. We have a blog you could sign up for on our website, surefiresocial.com. We also have a bi-monthly newsletter. There's a lot of really good content. It also summarizes all, I, I write for a lot of the big technology um, blogs and stuff like that, so it kind of aggregates all that stuff so people could see that. Um, and we have a lot of different resources, a lot of ebooks like Digital Forensics, Google Magnet, and a lot of things that teach you how to do it yourself if you wanted to. There's a lot of great content on the website. And that concludes it. Thanks.